going to do part one of two for functions because you need to write functions. Okay, functions increase the readability and maintain maintainability of your code. What, what you do is you break it into pieces. Um, your prototype defines the function interface. You have a definition that provides the actual guts of the function or what it does. Um, the prototype, its most important role is defining the types. And you use a function like any other expression on the right hand side and it will return a single value which will be used when you invoke the function. So functions add, it reduces redundancy. So if you have some code that's used over and over and over and over again, so hey, let's put this into a function. So we'll just, instead of you know, repeating it each time, you just call the function. And the function can do that code each time you call the function. This adds modularity. You can write your function and write it as independent of the rest of the application as possible. You have an independent module that can be moved and used elsewhere, either in the same application or some other application. It says, hey, we will use that. Adds readability. Anytime you can split things into pieces, the smaller the piece, the more readable it is. And of course, that means it's more maintainable. It, when it's easy to read, easy to understand, it's easy for somebody to fix or add features. And of course, reusability. You would try to make your function, like I say, make it as independent of the application as possible so you can pick it up and use it again in some other application. You don't reinvent the wheel again. It's, it's, been, it's round, it runs. Um, just grab the wheel that's working and put it on another automobile. So here, here's a quick example of some code that has no functions. So we're defining width, depth, and an easement. What we have here is a situation in real estate where you've got a street and you divide the street into lots and the depth of the lot is this direction, the width of each lot is this direction, and you have an easement for a sidewalk and a street, which takes up some portion of your real estate. When you buy the lot, you're buying the entire bit of lot, but because of the easement for the street, you can only use this portion of it. So the total area of what you're paying for is the width times the depth. The useful area is the width times the depth minus your easement. And so we print that out, total area and the useful area. And so you have one lot that you do this calculation for, another lot you do this calculation for, another lot you do this calculation for. We've already got a place where we might want to put this into a function. So here we've put it into a function and I haven't defined the function here we're just calling it. So we're going to calculate the total area. We're passing in the width and we're passing in the depth. And we get the useful area. We're passing in the width, the depth, and the easement. This will do its calculate. The functions will do whatever calculations based on the parameters you passed in and it will return a value which will be used in this expression. And in this particular case, it's printing the value out. Now, the prototype, your function prototype has to come before the function is used. It consists of your return type, the name of the function, and some parameters, if any. So the type can be like int or bool or any of the user-defined types. You give it a unique name that's not a keyword. And generally a verb is a, is a good name, like we want to calculate something, calculate area. And then you have zero or more parameters. And the parameters is usually a type, very often with a name also. 
So calculate area will pass in int some side. So the int is her type. The name of this particular parameter is side. It turns out you don't need to give it a uh, name for the parameter, but it's useful. It's, it's self-documenting when you do that. And it must be defined before you refer to it. And a little quick thing on nomenclature, the parameters are what you call these guys that are being passed into the function. The argument is the value of a parameter. So if the side happens to be 5, we, this is the 5 is the argument. So here's an example of a prototype. We're returning a float. We want to calculate the useful area. We need the width passed in. We need the depth passed in, and these are each floats. And we need the easement passed in, which is also a float. And here, here we have a good example where each variable has a comment that says, this is what this parameter is for. So return type is float. The name of the function is calculate useful area. Then we've got our round parentheses, which include each of the three parameters that have to be passed into this function.